G'day and welcome to Choosing Your Uni. I'm Rob Maliki coming to you from Garrigal Land in Sydney today. Thanks for your company. And my guest today is Liam Bowman from the University of Newcastle. And Liam's studying a Bachelor of Education. Super good to have you here, mate. Thanks for joining me on Choosing Your Uni. Really oh, looking forward to chatting. How good is this? Oh, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, thank you very much for having me here. It's a, it's a big honour. Awesome. Opportunity. Uh, the, the pleasure is mine, <laughs> it's quite seriously. And look, Newcastle, very close to my heart. Love the town, love the uni. Is there something that surprised you about the University of Newcastle when you started studying there? Yeah, well, absolutely. When I first started studying here at the University of Newcastle, I actually wasn't uh, wasn't prepared for the like amount of like social activities and clubs that actually existed on the campus for all the different types of like, hobbies that yeah, people cool. can have. Like, it becomes like you've got the chess club, you've got many different language clubs as well, of which I'm a a very deep integrated part of myself now awesome and yeah just the opportunities to make friends and i was kind of thinking when i first came it'd just be like my friends from high school i just hang around with them all the time and do stuff together go to lectures and whatnot but i've actually really expanded i like my social group i think that's what i i didn't exactly expect it from what i um, heard and what i thought about for university but that's 100 percent a really important part in like choosing a university 100 percent so tell me what else you're, which other clubs you're, you're, you're a part of. So into some languages, which language? I'm part of the, the Japanese English club. Yeah. Um, as that is one of my majors for my Bachelor of Secondary Education. So I think that that'd be uh, going to that club and interacting and helping out some of the exchange students has been like a really important part of um, my time here at Newcastle University. Something I never expected to really actually like get into and be able to be a part of in such a big way. But it's been like, once again, a fantastic opportunity to develop my own uh, language skills as well as my yeah expand my social circle that's so much fun isn't it like nothing i reckon there's nothing better than just hanging out with the international students and no, just like exchange ones who come down for a semester or a year it's just so much fun to be had yeah you can learn so much from them and also they're always like so grateful to learn things about you know the, the town of newcastle that they're staying in little areas that you can go to together are just wonderful events that i help organize for the university as well it's been yeah truly a wonderful experience where did your interest of Japan come from? Okay, so it stemmed from a trip I took back before the great pandemic back in 2019. I was there for a, um, a fair while and I did not speak the language at all. I was just literally there being just your classic tourist, going around on your couple of words, of course. But um, as time went on, I kind of you know regretted not being able to speak the language more. I wanted to interact with people more. I loved the culture, how clean everything was over in Japan, in Tokyo, in the countryside. When I came back to university, I thought, hey, Let's, um, let's major in this. Let's try to get a career where I can interact more with these people, bring Australia and Japan closer together. And that's where I found the NCP and the Japanese English Club at the Newcastle University. And from then it's just been a roller coaster ride, just going straight to where exactly when I want to go. So it's been. That's, that's cool. I yeah, can't wait to great. talk about the NCP a little bit, a bit later in our chat. But so Japan, I've never been to Japan, but it seems to me like a kind of country that gets under people's skin. Even just hearing you talking about it there. It's like it's like you've been infected by some awesome, you know, excitement <laughs> virus about this. What is it about Japan that does this to people? <laughs> I think that basically it's just got so many places for any type of person that you are. You like scenery, you like technology, you like great food. Like Japan has all of these things and to like the highest degree and level. So it can really inspire that um that wanderlust in people, just even hearing about it. Plus um, you have a lot of people that um, that it's on their bucket list to go to as a place just because I've seen so many great Instagram pictures and so many videos from the area. I think it's, well, I 100% agree with that opinion, that, that public opinion, that it is definitely a place you should at least visit once just to at least see a little bit of the East Asian culture and a great representation of it. Very, very polite people, very clean areas to live in and just the, the service you get at restaurants, at places you go to, it's truly phenomenal. So it's, it's very inspiring, to be honest. Hmm. What I love about when, when as you're talking about that, you know, you, you're sort of describing this awesome place. Clearly, it's really resonated with you. But what I really love is the fact that you're just like, okay, I'm I'm all in on this thing. That's not that common, right? For people, particularly you know, young people finishing high school or just getting into uni to find something and then just like actually kind of having the guts to to go and do that. So what's what's empowered you to feel confident to go and just chase that path? Okay, I think that part of this also stems from the fact that this degree that I started, I started a little bit later. So I'm, I'm actually 25 now and only halfway through my degree. So I didn't, I went to university a couple of times in the past, the first time for primary teaching, the second time for a Bachelor of Commerce. 
because I wanted to go into accounting. And then the third time when I came back for secondary education, majoring in Japanese is when I thought, hey, I've done a couple of things in the past. I've been working for a long time. This really resonates with me. Let's go all in. Let's chase it and do the absolute best that I could just to make sure I get good grades so I can kind of open up my future for different avenues, maybe translation work, maybe teaching in the future. Who knows? But I reckon 100% putting everything behind what you are really passionate about and finding that when you can is a really important thing. I'd love to talk more about that process of, you know, taste testing a few different degree options of course. Um, yeah. and then sort of dropping in and out of those and, and now finding this path that you're really keen on because that, that's a really confronting thing for people to do, isn't it? Oh, yeah, for sure. There's a lot of people that like see this kind of process as like, oh, I need to make sure that first time that I go into something is going to be absolutely perfect. Otherwise, you know, I lose a lot of time. I lose a lot of money. I lose motivation. Some people just kind of, they wait too long to kind of just go into something and give it a really good try. And you don't really know if you're going to love something or want to make it your future career until you spend time uh, interfacing with it, studying it, and really finding that passion is something that resonates with you deep inside. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Also, I also think it's so important, you know, if you start something out, and it sucks. Just rip yeah. the band-aid off and change. Uh, so, so there's so much sunk cost, you know, in, in our lives. Um, yeah, you should never feel that kind of like, oh, I've started this thing, so like I'm kind of forced into it. Especially university. Like mm -hmm. university is a part where it's basically an amazing thing to help you and inspire you along the way to something that you really want to do. That way you can really stand out, you can really shine and make a wonderful career from something. If your parents tell you to do something, then you don't want to do it. And you just go to university because you think, oh, well, I just have to do this course. I love my passion. I'm disappointed. You're going to end up being the person disappointed in yourself. And you're going to be unhappy and you're going to drop out anyway. And then, you know, it's just not going to be any good. And I've seen this happen countless times over my years at university. So you should do what you want to do. It might be hard to find that particular thing that you're really interested in. But I'd really, really recommend just even before you go to university, come to the university, speak to some students, speak to some staff, just kind of get as much help as you possibly can with you know try, trying to help find your own path you know watch, watch some videos investment in your future is the most important investment you can possibly make especially as a young person going into a university it's coming for you one way or another isn't it like the, having to face that change i always think you know i've just sort of hit my 40s and the number of people that i hear around me sort of saying oh god like, i'm not really sure i'm doing the thing that i want to do and weighing up having to change and that's once you know you've got a mortgage you've got kids you're kind of Ooh. deeply invested in some sort of career and suddenly you're having that holy shit moment where oh my god now do i actually really want to do what i'm doing i think it's so much better to do it you know when you're in your early 20s the oh 100 percent. we do the commitments that you'd have when you're older that 100 percent. yeah although yeah. You, can, you can still do it when you're older as well there's like nothing really stopping you it's just your own you know motivation and work that you've got to put in but I reckon when you're young, it's the time to make mistakes. It's the time to experiment. And it's the time to really hone yourself in on that perfect craft that you want to really master. Because that's where your fulfillment in life is going to come from in the future, not from how much money you're making or by how much you're, um, how proud of you or your parents are, although they should be proud of you regardless. But it's that's inner self-fulfillment of doing something that you truly love is what's going to really pay off dividends in the future. Awesome. The background behind you is super colourful. Where, where are you right now? I love um, it. So, uh, <laughs> very, very thematic for the uh, the NCP. I'm actually in the uh, international international house on the Newcastle University campus. It's just called the house, where international students can come by, have a chat, a video call home. You can just you know experience some different cultures and chat to different people. And I might often come here with Japanese students just to hang out, do some study together. And it's just like a really nice, fantastic place. You know, you've got toasters, you've got ovens, you've got everything to make food. Just have a bit of a party here. It's really a, just a really awesome place yeah what else do you like about the about the campus at newcastle so you talked about the clubs and societies always love the the social side of, of uni of newcastle Does, is there still beach party do they still do beach party at bar on the Ooh. hill or is that dead i don't know about that i haven't heard it's about it for a while back a long long do, time you definitely know there are a lot of parties there but <laughs> i don't often go to them i'm busy organizing stuff for my own club for my own parties and whatnot and, yeah. and speaking of which i just had like a like a welcome party to all the international students at the japan Inc. society and that was resounding success over 100 members signed up we so had about 60 70 members come and it was just like everyone's eating pizza i made a quiz for everyone to do very very fun very competitive and just you know everyone was having a good time i think one of the most important parts about what makes it fun to come to university is the social connection the networking finding some peers doing the same kind of thing as you and working together 
and collaborating to make your efforts, study and assessments at university just a little bit easier and more fun. Since we're talking about like international students, if, if an international student's watching this and has seen the Uni of Newcastle, knows nothing about Newcastle, mm. what would you tell them about Newcastle as a town? Newcastle as a town is a very relaxed. You'll have a lot of support from people around you. Everyone is extremely friendly, no matter what department that you're going to be coming to and studying under. Anybody, but that's like the course coordinators or people that people that are organising the courses for you. They're a simple email away. And in my case, I'm actually I actually drop by the dean of education's office occasionally. Her name's Sue Ledger. And um, we just love to just talk about different things happening in education, about pedagogy, about how we can improve and improve and change education as a whole. So you've got a ton of opportunity to actually talk with some of the industry experts right here at university, no charge to you, and you can work together to really, you know, get those connections, collaborate with people, and just make the most of your unique experience. But for Newcastle as just like a whole, I'm not sure how it is down in Sydney or other major towns, but Newcastle, very relaxed, very easy to get around. You'll have a wonderful time if you come to Newcastle University. And what's the lifestyle like? The lifestyle? Yeah, so around, the, around the city, like, the, yeah, around the city. Yeah, of course. Well, basically, there's a lot of a, a lot of people go to the beach all the time, especially during the summer. It's just like we've got nothing but beaches all down the coast. We have a ton of restaurants, of places to go to just for, like, for general use. Gyms, we have swimming pools. We have just, like, I suppose, like, one of the, one of the main lifestyles that people have around here They'll usually come together, they'll meet up, go to like a restaurant, go to a cafe, something in the morning, just hang out. And I've done this countless times with some of the uh, some of my uh, new friends and university students. And just, you know, it's, it's just important to take a step back, relax, and just enjoy your time in life. And that's what I really think that uh, Newcastle epitomises, just a laid back, casual approach, but uh, making sure to focus on the right things, focus on university, focusing on work. Yeah, just a wonderful, relaxed town. Nothing too stressful about it. Is there heaps of work around? I guess that's a big question for lots of people heading into uni. Is there plenty of work? Right now, actually, yes, there is a shortage of work as I've found that for my connections in the retail, because I do work in retail and I work as a sort of wedding planner right now. Oh. Basically, I I know quite a few people that like own retail businesses and they're, they're always looking for people in retail as well as in the hospitality industry as well. Tons of work and plenty of internships available depending on what you're looking for for example if you're like an engineer there's a bunch of internships that are available right now out in singleton way that's particularly if like you're going to electrical engineering and this is just like one example of people that i know but 100 percent, if you put your feelers out if you talk to uh, the university staff they can always always put you in touch with somebody that can give you a bit of a work experience not a problem at all i love the fact that newcastle is such a fantastic little community I mean, big city, big enough city. You know, there's everything you want there: great beaches, great outdoor lifestyle. You know, pretty chilled. But then, you know, if you really want big city, Sydney's what two and a half hours on the train away. If you really want to get down there, but then the uni is such an important part of the community, as you're saying, like internships, there's good integrations with the business community and stuff like that. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, not not just for the locals. Like, obviously, if you've grown up in Newcastle, it's, it's kind of the obvious choice in terms of place to go. Yeah, but. I, don't, I think more people should think, more Australians should think about moving away from home because a place like Newcastle has got so much going for it. You know, somebody feels a bit overwhelmed in the big city, like mm. Newcastle, perfect in terms of size, a bit more relaxed, less pressure, really good option, you know. And, um, of course, as well, uh, what you're finding, what's surprising about Newcastle too is that, like, almost everyone, like, we're, like, two degrees away from, like, knowing everybody in the town. So, like you'll know someone and like they'll know someone else that maybe you know so and university is like really a central hub because it's for a lot of the industry professionals they put out feelers for internships for jobs so you can go and get connected with a, a lot of different people in the Newcastle yeah. area which is I reckon a very important part of looking uh, for a career and trying to get some work experience. What are you enjoying most about secondary education? Okay so what I didn't expect and what I am enjoying is the the psychological aspect I'm actually learning quite a bit of psychology of how like the human brain works, especially coming into, you know, those those young like prepubescent ages of like what strategies and techniques you should use to teach particular demographics of age. So we're looking at policy as well. I'm very interested in policy as basically we have the same school structure that's been the same for a very, very long time. You know, students are actually they group together based on like date of manufacture. So, you know, <laughs> is it is how I like to 
put it, as well as it's the same even though we've got rapidly advancing technologies. And now even looking at AI and how AI can write essays, it can write songs, it can draw pictures. This is going to be a thing where a student can just put a prompt into the AI and then immediately write something up. Uh, and then you won't even know that it's um, been done by an AI because it'll have some way to scrub this from, like, I don't even know exactly how it works, but I know that's going to be a bit of a problem in the future and it's definitely something that needs to be addressed. But basically, once again, policy, a, a fantastic a fantastic thing to look at and really hone in on in the educational sphere right now. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to learning as much as I can about it, as much as I can about human psychology, as that's one of my, one of my other fascinations in the educational sphere. And yeah, I reckon those are two are like the most interesting and most fun part about the uh, Bachelor of Secondary Education. That's cool, isn't it? I mean, just as you're talking about AI, it makes me think that the students who are kind of currently at uni who are doing education, studying education, of course, going in and teaching is one thing, but policy is mm. such a huge one. And if you're that student, you've got an interest in AI and you're doing courses, not only the curriculum education side of things, but then you're adding on, I'm not sure if you're actually adding on any, if you're actually doing that, any AI courses, but if you were to, like what a specialty that becomes, how valuable that is as a resource for departments of education, for schools going forward as they grapple with these you know, big technological shifts, you become like this invaluable resource because you're going to be one of so few people that have those skills. Yeah, 100%. Like, I'll say it here first. You can look back at this in a couple of years and be like, he was right, AI is going to become absolutely huge and deeply integrated into our society in like a ton of ways. It already kind of is with Google, with YouTube, with algorithms, but it's about to take like a big next step, which is kind of scary but we need to be prepared for this and we need to be focused on, especially in the educational sphere, of course, is what I'm talking about. We need to be ready and we need to inform teachers about what's coming and prepare them because this is going to be a very big change and a big paradigm shift. Yeah, cool. So is that something you're thinking of doing, like doing some specific AI courses or is that already part of the curriculum? Uh, it's not part of the curriculum. That's, this is literally just like I'm looking at trends right now online and incorporating it, incorporating it into like my like uh, my understanding of the ed educational paradigm of what I should be thinking about. And of course, because I love policy, I know that this is going to be, this is going to be coming up very soon. And it kind of already is a little bit from people who are starting to wise up to it. And I think that it's best to be a little, a little bit ahead of the curve, especially, yeah, you know, smart. you don't want to be behind the curve, especially when it comes to educating um, our youth. And that is a bit of a problem, isn't it? It's like education, there's so much bureaucracy that sits behind the front line, behind those frontline teachers who are in the classroom day, mm -hmm. day on day. But behind that, the bureaucracy inside government that's responsible for setting up all of this big machine and pushing the machine forward moves pretty mm -hmm. slowly. And it almost feels like, I agree with you, it feels like whoever moves fastest on this will win. No, yes, 100%. Yeah, and so so for somebody, if, if they're watching this and they're thinking, like, oh, I'm interested in education, yeah, like really. And in fact, mate, there's a broad lesson in that, isn't there? It's like it doesn't matter what mm -hmm. discipline you're doing as a main discipline, but if you're looking at those future trends, where is my industry going? Yeah, you know, is there a technological element? Is there some other element in there that that's really cutting edge right now? If you can chuck that in on top of whatever you're doing, oh, you just become so much more valuable as a potential employee downstream, don't you? Yeah, hundred percent. It's like back in the past, you never needed a new to know how to use a computer or Microsoft Word or PowerPoint, that kind of stuff. But now with jobs and especially in like any jobs where you're using a computer, it's kind of just like you just need to know this kind of stuff. You don't just walk in there and have to learn from scratch. That's a very important part of our society of just like some skills that are going to be required to know just before even being employed anywhere, particularly in a corporate job. I reckon um, not only AI, uh, like computer smarts, IT work, coding is going to be even more imp important moving forward in the future. Yeah, neat. My guest today has been Liam Bowman from the University of Newcastle. He's a Bachelor of Education secondary student and has won a huge scholarship to go and study in Japan for 19 months. Dude, have such an amazing time. I'm really looking forward to reconnecting with you in like two years' time. We can talk about what it was like. No, of course. That'd be fantastic. And um, in Japanese, thank you for talking with me. Thanks for talking with me, mate. It's been great chatting. No problem at all. Right. Thanks very much.